I grew up in a small Scandinavian town of 700 people called Carlstead, Minnesota. During my childhood years, I didn't have much exposure to the Native American culture. About 35 miles south of my hometown, a bigger town called Thiefer Falls, we would go and visit my grandma. My grandma always had the best VHS movies, from VeggieTales to Hallmark films to Disney movies. One of the movies we used to watch when we were at my grandma's was the 1950s Disney movie, Peter Pan. I remember I always pretended my grandma's house was Neverland, and I was like Peter Pan, who could fly and get away from adults and live a wonderful adventure. But one of the scenes I believe to be my first exposure to Native American depictions was in Peter Pan. I remember my first reaction, I was terrified, but also I didn't find the depiction of Native Americans racist. Now when I see the scene, I see the racist depictions of them having red skin, angled noses, even older women being fat and loose teeth. We see the chief even use sign language to communicate. He proceeds to speak in broken big English. Pan, big, big chief. The chief even teaches them how to be all about red man, as if Peter, brother, Jane, and John don't know anything about Indians. During the racist song, What Made the Red Man Red, we watch as Peter Pan is captivated by Tiger Lily, as I view her as a sexualized maiden. Marabua noted that key qualifiers consisting the princess figure includes her connection to nature and the American landscape, her innocence and purity, her link to nobility, her exotic culture and beauty, her attraction to the white male hero. We see Tiger Lily's beauty attract the attention of Peter Pan. With Jane's jealousy, Tiger Lily kisses Peter Pan. He blushes into a red color, becoming the red man. While my younger self didn't understand what I saw, I sat through without knowing the stereotypes were presented in the movie. The lack of not telling what nation the Native Americans were and not knowing the derogatory term redskin. As Tamakura says, as narratives in which characters, often children and teenagers, fail to learn important lessons about real indigenous, fail their attempts to educate viewers. Instead, they reiterate long-standing stereotypes and representations of Indians. My mother grew up in the town of Thief River Falls. I remembered she would once tell us the curse of the river in Thief River Falls. She would tell us that a long time ago, when the white settlers began to settle upon the land of Thiefer Falls, the Native American tribe living on that land left a curse into the river. The curse was that every year, a soul of a white person would be taken away into the river. For years, I always believed that. Every time I visit my hometown, passing through Thiefer Falls, it's as if the Scandinavian culture has taken away the Native American culture. Especially, you can see Norwegian trolls at every shop in Thief River Falls. But the more you explore the town, you'll pass only one statue, a Native American warrior statue of a chief's son. With re-watching the scene of the Native Americans in Peter Pan, it brought me memories. It personally saddens me that the lack of education and learning that I was given in high school, that I didn't fully understand that tribes still live today. It brings to me of so many questions of my hometown, Thief River Falls, and the change of my perspective of the area that I grew up in. With all the Scandinavian culture presented in the town, it has somewhat erased the Native American culture. Over this summer, I personally want to take a journey back to my hometown and to learn more about the native land I stood on growing up, to learn about the tribe, where they are located, and their language.